All right. There we go. Can everyone see my screen? Yes? Okay. Yes. yes. All right, wonderful. So agency and fiduciary duties. All right, the importance of our role as real estate professional is the uh, key element of what our responsibilities are uh, to the consumer, right? The buyers, the sellers, the developers, and, you know, the uh, uh, investors out there. And, you know, what are the pros and cons, right, of understanding your role and the duties regarding your role? Just because you have a real estate license doesn't necessarily mean that, uh, you know, you're doing everything as according to the, to the law, the Department of Real Estate, the California statute, and more so the agency agreement, right? The agency agreement defines our position, our responsibility, but more so it talks about what are your duties, okay? And your duties as a licensed real estate professional, right? That is the number one key element to success, but more so to protect you and your commission. That's what it really boils down to is as an agency's responsibility is what are you supposed to do, right? Well, we're in the real estate industry. Our number one job is to find, identify, negotiate, open escrow, close and, and uh, close the transaction and ultimately get paid a commission. Here's the problem that I see with a lot of real estate agents that go too much above and beyond, okay? And the problem with that is that this is where liability comes into play. And this is where uh, complaints come into play because we go outside the scope of our uh, job description per se, okay? So there's two elements to this. One is the agency. And then two is the fiduciary duties. What are you responsible to do, okay? Why do agents do what they do and ultimately get themselves in a trap where now they're back paddling, right? Because uh, they did something they shouldn't do. So today's uh, presentation just kind of defines through the California Association of Realtors, you know, the tools that we need to understand our role as real estate professionals. All right, so who is a, a dual agent as an example? An individual agent who represents both parties to a real estate uh, property transaction. Each individual agent from a brokerage firm that represents both parties to a transaction, even if the agent works exclusively with one side. So here's you know, the, the, the agency aspect of it. If you are an agent representing the listing, right? The seller, and you're hosting an open house as an example, and a buyer comes into your open house, right? The buyer falls in love with the property. Uh, you ask those critical, critical uh, questions. Uh, Mr. Or Mrs. Buyer, are you working with a agent, right? <clears throat> the answer is no, we're not working with an agent. Wonderful. <clears throat> Does this home hit all the bells and whistles? Can I uh, answer any of your questions, right? All those elements will get you to uh, know better, feel better about you know, the individual buyer. Well, and the reason we ask these questions is because we wanna make sure that the buyer is not working with another agent or they don't have an exclusive agency relationship with another agent, right? Because then we're uh, in, in, the, in the realm of ethics, right? Because if we know that someone is working with another agent, we have to respect and um, you know, be professional in our, in our approach. But in essence, you know, it's really up to the buyer to divulge the information. So in instance, when it comes to dual agency, you gotta be very, very, very careful because how can you represent both parties and not divulge information that you have knowledge of? You're the listing agent representing the seller. Buyer comes in the open house. Buyer says, I don't work with an agent. Buyer wants to work with you and submit an offer, right? Buyer asks you, well, you're the listing agent. What is the lowest I can possibly get the home for? What are the terms that I can get? You know, that's where you got to be very, very careful. It's a fine line that you are putting yourself into because at any given time, you compromise this transaction, meaning you compromise it, then each party can hold you accountable 
and st stipulate that you are not taking care of their best interest. Okay. And then that's where complaints and liability, and ultimately you may lose the uh, transaction, the listing from it, because they don't feel comfortable with you. Now, that fine line, as I indicated, is very sensitive when it comes to dual agency. Now, dual agency also can be, okay, dual agency can also be two agents with the same company, two agents with the same company, meaning you're the listing agent, another of your associate uh, professionals has the buyer, submits an offer, then that is considered dual agency. Okay, and then dual agency also means you represent both parties. Now, you gotta, again, be very, very careful. If you have not done a dual agency uh, transaction, I caution you, okay? Because here's the bottom line on this. It is very difficult to really represent two buyers who are buying and selling the same home because there's going to be compromise some way, somehow. And if you're willing and, and uh, leaning towards that, okay, meaning you divulge that information, then you're compromising the other party. Remember, everything is all about confidential. Everything is all about, you know, uh, taking care of their, their best interests, right? So if a question is asked to you, well, what is the bottom number, uh, bottom number that the uh, buyers will, uh, excuse me, the seller is willing to take, right? Well, <clears throat> the question there is, even though you do know, you cannot divulge that information. Because if, uh, if the seller says, look, I know we have it listed for 1.2, but if an offer comes in at a, a million one, okay, I may consider it but I don't want you to divulge that information. I want you to list it at one, two, okay? Now you list the property on the MLS for one, two, a buyer comes, you represent that buyer who wants to submit an offer, and now you're on a catch 22. Well, what is the uh, number? I see that the property has been on the market for 21 days, right? Well, in your, in your defense, you've gotta be very, very, very careful because again, if the seller finds out that you divulge this information, not just are you in violation, there may be an ethics complaint, but more so you may lose the listing and there's nothing I can do to save that listing, even though all listings are, are, are owned by the uh, brokerage, right? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Because if there's any indication of wrongdoing, misleading, fraud, or any ethical uh, practice, then I have no choice to avoid a liability or a complaint, right? Because not just can they uh, complain to the uh, local board, the California Association of Realtors, and more so they can even file a complaint with the Department of Real Estate. And you do not want the uh, DRE investigating you. And it can be something so small, but <clears throat> here's the problem that I see when the Department of Real Estate comes into play is, they send, out, they send out this letter, which is a very detailed letter from the investigator over at the Department of Real Estate. And that letter is going to ask for a lot of information. What they're trying to do is find some dirt on you, something that they can stick to file some type of complaint against you, and then ultimately jeopardize your uh, real estate license. You know, and most could be just a slap in the hand, but if it's a severe situation that money uh, was, uh, was involved, damages were involved, it can be more than just a slap in the hand. It can be where they uh, restrict, uh, uh, restrict, uh, suspend, or even revoke your license. You know, you do not want to be in that position because it doesn't just uh, involves stress, but it also, it's very time consuming. And more than that is money involved because you may have to hire an attorney. A broker is only uh, so much that we can do because we're not attorneys. Then sometimes you may have to hire an attorney to help uh, represent you if there's any accusations from the Department of Real Estate. Okay. 
I know I said a little more than what I should have, but again, I want you to practice good uh, ways of professionalisms when dealing with transaction. That's your number one priority, right? And if you can avoid dual agency, even better. Just say, look, get another agent in your office that says, look, we're gonna split it. I'm willing to give you uh, some of the uh, costs. I brought you this buyer and we can go 50-50 or whatever arrangements you have. Because at the end, you know, you're controlling you know, this transaction, but you're also putting an arm's length of, uh, of this transaction. So that way it doesn't compromise your, your position when representing the seller. So look at it from that perspective as well, okay? To whom do agents owe fiduciary duties? Well, do agents owe fiduciary duties to both parties? Just because you have a relationship with a seller, right? You have that relationship with the seller and a buyer comes in on an open house, you don't have that relationship. You know, you wanna make sure, one second. It's, it's already on. Okay, cool. So uh, let's see. I don't see Mike. Uh, I think he's in the wrong Zoom. Yeah, the, tell him to check uh, the uh, system. Hey, okay. Simon. So yeah. I mean, the Zoom that came on the email is incorrect. It goes to Scott Hassler's something. So I just want to let you know, I couldn't get in off of the link from the email today. I went back into your calendar and that's how I got in. Oh, okay. Oh. Got it. Yeah, because it's usually I'll have a pretty decent participation. Yeah. So the, yeah, the email for the week where you have just click on it, it goes, it says Scott Hassler. I sent you a private text, but I know you're in the middle of your class. Anyway, I didn't want to interrupt you, but okay. But I, I wormed my way to figure it out. <laughs> well, that's that's amazing. And it's always good to see you too as well. So thank you for jumping on the uh, on the uh, uh, class. Um, so going back to, you know, your fiduciary responsibility, you know, who do you hold that responsibility? Well, if you're representing two uh, clients, a buyer and a seller, then it's, it's both directly right in the middle. You cannot side with the seller just because you have that relationship. You also have to side with the buyer because that buyer is now part of your responsibility. Meaning if they're going to be working with you, you have to uphold the integrity of the transaction and uh, work and, and uh, bat for your clients as well. And here's the, the, the fine line is how do you maneuver to that? That's why a lot of real estate agents, instead of representing both uh, parties, they'll get another agent involved saying, hey, you know what? I represent Mr. and Mrs. Seller. You're going to represent the buyer. And you know we're gonna we're gonna work it together, but now you at least have a distance, even though it's still considered due agency. But now they can have a conversation where you're not involved in it because you have another licensed agent within the same company. Okay, neither party's interest may come before the others. Okay, again, just as I said, you know you have to understand how to navigate that and uh, uh, and the ability to you know, hold that composure, but more so, right, is the ability to not divulge any information. Now, with that being said, if the uh, seller is fine in letting you uh, give that information to the buyer, then you're good. You're awesome. You're okay. You know, because now the seller has given you instruction. Now, to protect yourself from any fiduciary uh, liability, you want to have that in writing not over the phone, okay, but something in writing, via text, via email, something in writing that says, you know, you've been instructed to divulge, you know, that information to the consumer, the buyer. Then if this ever goes sideways, at least you have something to back yourself up in case, you know, the seller now is upset because we were not supposed to give any information to the buyer, okay? Here's really the big picture in my opinion. If you can avoid it, avoid it, just represent one party. And I understand the benefits of it too. I understand the benefits of, you know, representing both parties. And what are the benefits of that? Commission, right? You get a bigger commission. 
Both parties' interests must come before the agents when agents from the same brokerage are both sides of the transaction. Each agent, both buyer and seller, are equal fiduciary duties, regardless of which party they're actually working with. Again, you know, the, the pros and cons of our, of our scenario here is um, it doesn't matter <clears throat> what, what information you have, disclosure you have, price you have, any of that, you still need to respect the transaction. You still need to uh, provide the necessary uh, uh, confidentiality when it comes to either clients. And it can be both ways, folks. It can be the buyer as well, you know? And maybe that you have a relationship with the, uh, with the listing agent or the seller does not allow you to divulge any information if you are you know, working with both parties here, okay? It just doesn't work that way. Now, if you have instructions and they're fine divulging in that information, then by all means, you're okay, then move forward with it. What are fiduciary duties? Common law duties that an agent owe to his or her principal. Who are the principals in this transaction? Well, the buyer and the seller are. More expensive than the statutory duties is the agent's own uh, to uh, clients. Require the highest good faith, undivided service and loyalty. May require an agent to discover and disclose previously unknown material facts and to consult and advise the clients regarding the implication of certain disclosures, okay? Now, here's the thing, you know, and this is why this topic is very, very important is understanding, you know, the good, the bad, and the ugly. And regardless of the good, the bad, and the ugly, if it's a no material fact that may jeopardize the, uh, um, uh, uh, the property, then, you know, you know, as a professional, you must divulge and disclose that somehow, some way. Having the seller disclose it through uh, transaction, uh, the uh, forms, the TDS, the SPQ, or even drafting an addendum. And I've seen scenarios and circumstances where that information has already been provided to the uh, buyer. And now something else happens where the seller was not aware, but it was brought to their attention. They bring it to your attention. Now you're, you're in a position is, what do I do now? We're about to close. This may change the trajectory of our, of our position. Yeah. But I'd rather... I'd rather be in a position of divulging uh, material facts about the property than hiding it under the carpet and hope and crossing your fingers that the deal closes and then it come, doesn't come back to bite you. Because it will. Because buyers will definitely be uh, bothered and upset that uh, those, and, and they're going to believe that this is something that the seller knew and fail to disclose, you know? Yes, they have to, um, they have to provide, you know, uh, what proof they have that the seller knew about it, but you do not want to be in that position. You just don't. It's time consuming, as I said earlier, and it, uh, it doesn't really help from your focus on going out for new opportunities because now you're drained in a, on a case and now you're, you're uh, divulging more information, you're providing uh, additional documentation, and now you're with your TC and your brokerage trying to get additional forms, you know, so if you can avoid all that, even better. But here's, you know, the discovery of uh, any material facts. If something does happen, it doesn't matter if it's something small or something severe, you disclose and you bring it to the, uh, to the buyer's attention. I'd rather lose the deal then be involved in a closed transaction, collect the commission, and now that buyer is suing us or that commission that you earn goes bye-bye, okay? And now everything that you were because of your position trying to sugarcoat this or uh, brush it under the uh, carpet, now it comes back to bite you and haunt you. It's not worth it, okay? Do the right thing each and every time, do the right thing. And I promise you, you will sleep a lot better when you uh, practice in good faith and do the right thing. What other agents uh, duties may apply? 
or statutory duties to non-clients and clients alike. Let's just say that you're doing an open house, right? And as an open house, you don't have any control over the buyer, right? You don't. The buyer is coming to an open house, okay? Open house, what does that mean? Well, that means that, uh, you know, it's open to anyone. They don't have to have an agent present. They don't have to submit an offer in order to come and see the property. If it's an open house and you're hosting it, then anyone, any consumer can come in and uh, view the property if it falls within the parameters, right? If you're hosting an open house on Saturday from one to uh, four o'clock, but someone comes in at 1230 asking, hey, I know you're having an open house. We're here. You got to let us in. Do you allow that person to come in, even though your open house doesn't start till 1 p.m.? Okay. Well, the answer is very clear, very simple, right? No. That's the reason you posted the time frame, and they have to respect your and also the seller's uh, wishes from one time to another, right? Anyone coming in before, anyone coming after. I've seen situations where you know, you're, you're hosting an open house at four o'clock and now it's uh, 4.15, you're, you're trying to pack everything, shut everything, close windows, shut the lights, shut the AC, now start collecting your uh, uh, directionals, right? And as you're walking out, you have a consumer and they know, <clears throat> I know that it's at four o'clock, I'm running late, there was traffic, you know, can we still see the property? Haven't you come across that situation, right? Well, that time is a discretion now. Now it's okay, you know, should I just stop what I'm doing and allow, to, uh, uh, allow this person to come and see the open house knowing that there was a window of three to four hours to do so, or you say no? Well, that's your decision. That's your discretion. That's if you want to and say, look, if I don't, I don't have anything else, this, this uh, client may be that buyer that wants to submit an offer. What if, right? Then you choose. But you also have the right to choose no to that. Okay. You also have the right to say no to that. So conduct a reasonable, competent, and diligent visual inspection of the accessible areas of the property. So Here's my position on this, and this is why the AVID is very important. As part of the duties as an agent and as your agency disclosure and your fiduciary responsibility, okay, you have a duty to also visualize the property and its integrity of the home, okay? I was... Um, I was uh, looking at a, a, a property over the weekend and uh, this property seemed to me like it had structure damage. All the walls in the house from the kitchen, the living room, the dining room, the family room, and uh, the bathroom and some of the bedrooms had cracks. And this was on a raised foundation. So to me, an assumption to that is there might be some type of uh, integrity of the uh, infrastructure of the uh, home. <clears throat> now, I cannot base it on that. The home was built in the 1930s. And, you know, there's been a lot of earthquakes throughout the 80 something years. You know, you still want to do a, uh, a, a reasonable, competent and a dil dil diligent inspection, or excuse me, a visual inspection of the property. Now, does that mean you got to wear a hard hat, a ladder, a flashlight, excuse me, and uh, go under the house, go on top of the roof, go inside the attic? No, that's not what it says. Visual, visual inspection. If I see cracks, I'm going to note that. There's cracks. I'm not going to emphasize the size. I'm not an engineer, I'm not a contractor, but I'm gonna note on my agent visual inspection that there is some uh, cracks on it. I'm not even going to say it's foundation, okay? 
not going to say it's foundation because again, who am I to interpret that? I, I am not an engineer. I don't know about foundation. I'm not an expert on that, but what I am an expert is visualizing, right? I can see, visually see that there's cracks. I can see that there's cracks on the floor. I can see that there's stains on the property, right? And it could be, and I'm not gonna emphasize to say, well, I see stains to, for me, it, it appears that it's, uh, it's mold. How do you know it's mold? You know, you gotta test it. Do you have the right equipment to test it? It may just be um, fungus. It may just be algae. Who knows? But it's not our job to know that. You're just going to identify black spot on the living room corner. Cracks on the, on the uh, chimney. Take a photo of it, too. Important of an avid is uh, taking photos. You know, get your smartphone, right, and start plugging away because that's going to give you the visual, right? Because you're not going to fill out the Avid while you're looking at this home. That just never happens. It's like, okay, I got my Avid here. I'm going to go look, ba ba bum. I see stains here. No, you usually do the observation, right? Then you go back and do the report. But what, <clears throat> what better and what benefit it to you is if you had the photos there. Oh yeah, I remember about this crack in the uh, kitchen area. Oh yeah, I remember the uneven of the uh, of the uh, drawer or the uh, uh, one of the uh, cabinet doors, right? Oh yes, this light uh, appears to uh, uh, be out, and here's a photo of it, because that's going to uh, uh, build that muscle memory to remember. Oh yes, I remember X, Y, and Z, and that's all you're doing. So the importance of doing an Abbott, right? But more so having photos to back it up. Photos don't lie, right? <clears throat> photos can be a good testament to your uh, position because you have evidence. Can I ask a question about that? Absolutely. Um, do you, would you typically add photos with all of your avids? Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, Especially something, okay, cool. something big. I would definitely uh, put some put some photos on there. Just get your phone and start sapping away. Okay, I see this. Okay, From little things to the big things. Just uh, just disclose it. Okay. Let buyer, okay. Cool. Yeah, let the buyer make their uh, own decision if they want to ask for requests of repairs, ask for credit, or even a price reduction. All you're doing is uh, providing additional information of what your view of the property is. Doesn't mean yeah. you're an expert, doesn't mean you're the engineer. Well, I'm a contractor. Based on all this, it's gonna cost you about $80,000 to rehab. No, yeah. that is not our job. Our job is to just navigate the transaction. We just observe it, but we don't like make an assessment of what it is. No, never yeah. make an assess assessment of it, no. Yeah. Because now you're putting yourself in the liability. Because oh, if they oh, yeah. take that too hard, well, my agent says this is foundation and it's really yeah. not, then it could come back to bite us. Totally. I've seen where cracks happen because someone gets pushed into the wall, right? Walls are meant to uh, have cracks, you know, if you have enough force on it, right? Push someone or punch the wall, you're going to make some type of uh, dent on it or even crack. So again, we cannot stress the fact that, uh, you know, what the conclusion to is. All we're doing is identify what we see. That's it. Well, that was very helpful because I never even thought to add pictures to an avid. So it's like now I know what I would do like on my next listing. Absolutely. A hundred percent. You know, Sorry. yes. Sorry, I question. Um, I... You know, I've never done the photos either. I always do um, more for a lease so that something is like, you know, rememberable, like this is how it was like to protect yourself. But I haven't done that. But I, I will say that my last um, sale, uh, the listing, I was a buyer's agent, the listing agent used the glide, which I haven't done glide other than back in the peed days with a million peds that I did, um, you know, glide for any other service for that. And he did the Avid off of glide but it was really the, the, the weakest Avid I'd ever seen because he actually didn't write anything. He just put a photo. 
living room. Blah, blah, blah. And I was like, what kind of avid is this? Like he had nothing written. And so that's what it was. But I'm the, the pictures is great. But do we I've never I've never done that. Um, so when we send an avid, we we attach it and send it like through command. We can't do that. I don't think I know we can't through command. But I mean, do you you just would send it with it for the buyer for listing side and buyer side to have it? Yeah, absolutely. So <clears throat> part of the AVID is give it to your transaction coordinator and they can email the AVID. If it doesn't go through command, then the TC can send the agent visual inspection report and attach the images with that. And you can emphasize, you know, um, usually <clears throat> you'll know, right? If the picture is of a kitchen, obviously that's the kitchen. If the photo is of uh, the bathroom, you know that's the bathroom. But how you want to distinguish one from the other is if the bathroom is one, then to emphasize this is bathroom one, this is the master bedroom and master uh, bathroom. Uh, or if the property has you know, more, more bathrooms, then you want to categorize them as part of your, your avid. And to me, you know, we never in the past uh, done any photos or images. Now, it's a great practice to include these uh, uh, photos now because if you really think about the, um, of, of the form, it's a, it's a visual, right? A visual inspection of the property. You walk into the property, you're going to analyze it. You're going to be like a rotating conveyor, uh, not, a, not a conveyor, but you know, a, a bobblehead where you're just going to kind of up and down, side down, and kind of look at everything as you're walking things are going to be noticeable immediately, right? Now, that doesn't mean you also have to move furniture, right? If a sofa has been there for 25 years, who knows what's behind that sofa or cabinets? And I've seen where things stay there for many, many years, you pull it out and you realize, holy crap, you know, we have some type of uh, mildew or what it appears to be, you know, who knows? But it's not our job to stress and emphasize what it is. We do not, we don't have the proper tools. Are you going to say to articulate that is there is a black stain behind the uh, dresser? That's it. You don't even have to uh, measure it because I've I've got many many uh, questions. Well, do we need to measure the size? Oh, it's uh, five inches by whatever. No, that's not our job. Okay, you're not going to get tape measures. You're not going to get any of that stuff. All you're doing is just visualizing. Uh, the property and providing additional doc documentation to both the buyer and the seller. And that's also one uh, good thing to do because the seller may not even know. You know, when you live in the property, you, you're a, you're a, uh, have your habits, right? And sometimes you, you, you look at a wall and you realize, you know what, I never realized that there was a crack. And now you know, and it could be because, you know, settlement of the house, maybe shakes, it can be many variables of why now you see something come up, you know, but the, the ultimate protection is, you know, uh, it's to conduct a reasonable competent and uh, diligent, okay? What you said earlier, Christine, is, um, you know, not right from the agent just to take photos and think that's, that's my habit, okay? That's why you need to emphasize, you know, competent and diligent, you know, not be that lazy agent, snap, 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 here you go. Um, you, you make the uh, decision from there. No, act like a professional, right? And really articulate what you're trying to accomplish with these uh, visual inspection uh, forms. Because this could protect you from ever coming back. If there's a, a, a lawsuit between the buyer and the seller, they're gonna drag you into it as a witness. Well, you as a professional were in the property too. You know something too to the, uh, to the story, okay? I'd rather be protected that I can pull my old avid and realize, holy crap, now I remember about this. Yes, I remember vividly seeing a stain or a crack because what if that crack eventually leads to something else? Think about what happened, I think about a year ago, two years ago, out in Florida, an apartment, uh, apartment complex co uh, collapsed, literally collapsed. And there was a lot of people that uh, ultimately lost their lives because you can see from a camera from another building when it happened early in the mornings where half of the uh, building just went down. 
And there was indicators years before from the swimming pool that was leading and, and putting moisture uh, inside the, the, there was cracks that were leading into the foundation of the structure that ultimately it weakened the, uh, the foundation. And throughout the uh, years, it ultimately snapped. But there was indicators, you know, there was videos you could see from people actually looking at videos of cracks and uh, water spots and, uh, you know, just very strong uh, indicators that there was something wrong. They should have uh, condemned that property early on. And now imagine, you know, the, uh, the lawsuits involved in that. And that's going to be a case for years and years and years. You know, again, <clears throat> not saying that's going to happen to you, but what if you are involved in, in that uh, position where now you're dragged into court because of something that happened with the property? Okay. Even like a, a, an electrical box, you know, do you need to literally physically open it up? Well, it's a discretion, you know, uh, that can save the buyer and that can save the seller a lot because maybe they never open up the uh, electrical box, right? And because you're doing your due diligence and inspections as part of your visual, you open it up and realize, okay, this looks okay. But then down the line, they go back and see one of your photos and they realize, well, a professional electrician uh, um, identified, well, this is the source where this home ended up catching on fire. It started with the uh, electrical box, which again, you don't have to be an expert. All you're doing is photo. That's it. Does that make sense? I hope that kind of uh, clears some uh, standards to this. Disclose to potential purchasers material facts and defects affecting the value and desirability of the property, 100%, right? That is your job, that is your responsibility, folks, is, you know, as a, as a buyer uh, agent, or even as a, as a uh, seller agent, you wanna protect, you wanna protect yourself from any potential issues. If you know, or someone divulges this information, then you must disclose. Here's the one thing that has happened uh, in the past. You're walking the property and the uh, next door neighbor comes up, greets you and introduces your, uh, themselves to you. Hey, by the way, Simon, do you know that this uh, property X, Y, and Z, right? You knew about it because the neighbor said, is it something that you do not divulge or do you bring it to someone's attention? Well, if the neighbor is telling me about something, um, I'm gonna ask questions. I'm gonna ask the listing agent if I'm representing the buyer, hey, this was brought to my attention by the neighbor on 2222 Elm Street, right? This agent, uh, excuse me, this neighbor brought it that, uh, <clears throat> you know, they hear uh, uh, some sounds coming from the property or whatever the case may be, right? I'm just, you know, out of curiosity, have you heard anything? Based on the disclosures, I don't see anything. But that may open up a can of worms that says, oh, yeah, you know what? <clears throat> the seller failed to, uh, to divulge that information that in the attic, they may have a generator, right? A generator that when uh, the power goes out, that generator kicks in and makes the funny sound, right? Well, there you go. <clears throat> but if we wouldn't have known that if, um, if the neighbor wouldn't have brought us to our attention of a sound or a noise, right? And again, I'm just going left field on this. Doesn't mean that's going to happen, but just so you get an understanding, anything that may be a potential material fact or defect of the uh, property that may ultimately uh, devalue or desirability of the property, you wanna you wanna disclose. Okay, agents' inspection should reflect honest, fair dealing, and good faith. Uh, diligent exercise and reasonable skills and care. That is on your Abbott. If you look at your Abbott, I think it's on page three or four of the uh, Abbott, the agent visual inspection. And it says agents inspection should reflect honest, fair dealing and good faith, diligent exercise and reasonable skill and care, right? All these are very important because if you ever have to go to court and an attorney is trying to dissect and find you accountable to something, 
you know, your first thing is my responsibility is, you know, to be honest and in the fair dealing and in my uh, good faith of, you know, exercising reasonable care to all my clients. That's going to hold more water and more credibility on your part that you are following the uh, ethical aspects of all these real estate transactions. Okay. <clears throat> With clients' interests potentially is diverged, right? No clear and easy answers. Discuss with broker or office manager. Discuss with legal counsel, okay? So when there's no concise um, <clears throat> or no clear answer, this is like where well, you have to be like a child, okay? You want to be like a kid and ask questions. Well, why? Why is that? Why is this? Why is that happening? Be like a kid and ask a lot of why questions. Because if something doesn't make sense, it may not make sense to your client either. You want clarity, you want understanding, and you want to know what do I need to, to get or gather or uh, bring to really uh, be a decision factor if the buyer is going to move forward with the purchase or not. Remember, because once a buyer releases any and all contingencies, right? When the buyer releases any and all contingencies and um, the buyer finds out later of some no material fact and the buyer wants to back out of that, does the buyer have the recourse to do so when it was new material facts about the property? And the answer is, yeah. If you can argue the fact that this was something totally new, that I was not aware of, and this was brought to my attention after the fact, after all seller disclosures, TDS, SPQ, whatever forms there are, they didn't bring it to your attention in writing or verbal. And now after you have released all contingencies, can the buyer back out of the deal? Well, the answer is yes, they can. Because the contract says this, that the contract says, if anything comes to you that is after the fact, the buyer has five additional days to research, investigate, bring whoever they want to bring to determine if it's a property they want to buy. Even after they release any and all contingencies, they can still back out of the deal. And that's when you want to bring your broker or your office team leader involved to this engagement to help navigate that un uncertain, uh, un un um, excuse me, the uncertainty of this uh, uh, transaction because, you know, now this is going to cost the buyer money and the buyer was not prepared for this, right? Remember, all properties are sold in its as is condition, right? All properties are. So this is why the buyer needs to do any and all inspections. If that means, you know, 20 different inspections to satisfy the buyer's needs, by all means. There's nothing that the seller can say or do. They cannot limit the buyer from doing any and all inspections. They have to within the time frame, right? Which is already default at what? 17 days. 17 days for the buyer to do as many inspections as they want. If that means five different plumbers, by all means. If that means five different roofers, by all means. If that means five different home inspections or contractors, by all means. Obviously, it's going to cost money, but by all means, the buyer has the right to do so. You know, and if we as uh, brokers and managers need to escalate it to an attorney, by all means, we're going to do so because then, you know, they're going to hear it from a legal standpoint and help us navigate any and all issues that can come back to bite you or the company. What form should dual agents provide to clients? <clears throat> While first and foremost, as part of the uh, purchase agreement, it automatically provides you with what? The AD form, right? The disclosure regarding real estate agency relationship, better known as the AD form. A confirmation of real estate agency relationship uh, as well. <clears throat> the AC form. Note that paragraph 2B of the purchase agreement contains the required confirmation language. If the RPA is used, a separate AC is not necessary, okay? It is not necessary. But ultimately, if, it, uh, if it's not on there for some odd reason, 
then you can uh, replace it with the AC form, the confirmation of agency. Now, card form AD describes the different type of agency relationship possible and a transaction and their associate duties. If no dual agency, a uh, listing agent provides an AD to the seller and the buyer's agent provides an AD to the buyer. But if you're representing both, then you have to create the agency that has both the buyer and the seller, okay? And that satisfies your position of disclosure. Because let's just say that you submit an offer, an RPA, but you never submit the agency disclosure. Well, under certain circumstances, you know, the uh, seller is not obligated to pay you a commission. You heard me right. If you are not providing a AD form, and I've seen uh, case studies where an agent failed to provide an AD form to any party, then they're not uh, obligated to pay a commission. Okay, because a buyer can pay you a commission, right? That's why you have the buyer representation agreement in place in case that if the seller is not paying you a commission, you can still get compensation from the buyer. But if you're not provided that AD form, unfortunately, there's nothing that I can do to help articulate our position in a way to collect commission. Because if, you, if the buyer or the seller are savvy, they're going to say, well, I never was provided with an agency. Yeah, I submitted an offer, but I didn't know what the buyer and my responsibility to this agent. I thought he was just submitting an offer. If it happens, great. And if it doesn't, great. But I was under no obligation to pay a commission. And there's uh, very savvy consumers out there, buyers and sellers that are, understand the elements of these forms and they read them. And sometimes you deal with uh, uh, buyers and sellers that are attorney and judges that understand and are you know, uh, true to the matter of the uh, documents. So uh, part of the form, the AD is uh, in, in dual agency, the agent simply provides an AD form to each party. Uh, form states that the dual agent may not without express consent disclose to the buyer and the seller would accept lower price or to the seller that the buyer would pay more for the uh, property. Now, if you look at that agency uh, disclosure, it says fiduciary responsibility to the buyer, fiduciary responsibility to the uh, seller and fiduciary responsibility to both the buyer and the seller under a dual agency transaction. A dual agent will not disclose confidential information regarding financial position. So here are some of the motives that we may not divulge that information without the written consent of your client. Financial position, motivations, bargain position, personal information that may impact the price. So as an agent, you know, walking that fine line, right? You got to be very, very, very careful in how you approach these uh, these parameters, because if you are divulging, uh, divulging, uh, excuse me, divulging information <clears throat> that can compromise your position, or someone may want to not work with you because they don't trust you anymore, and they may also jeopardize the transaction and more so the biggest factor, which is your commission uh, as well. So the uh, AC form states the agency relationship present in a specific transaction may be signed by the buyer and seller separately or on a single form. And then it may also be included as part of the RPA or on a separate form. So the confirmation of real estate agency relationship, okay, <clears throat> here's a sample of what it would look like. Obviously it has the subject property this is or is not an amendment to or supersedes the agency confirmation of the purchase agreement, <clears throat> but it gives confirmation on your position. The AD clearly states, you know, your responsibility, the agent's uh, responsibility, your dual agent's responsibility, the buyer's responsibility, and the seller's responsibility, because we can hold them accountable, because you can be doing everything correctly, right? Everything correctly, and now the buyer or the seller are being difficult and not uh, helping you, you know, in any way, then yeah, you can hold the seller um, for compensation. You can hold the buyer for compensation. So this is clear expectations of what you and your, and your clients need to do. So Why provide an... 
Simon, yes. sorry, regarding that one you just had, the agency um, confirmation, uh, mm -hmm. the AC. Yeah. No, uh, the, um, not, I've seen it before, but I haven't used that one because we just have the AD or the 81 and 82. What um, is that? Is that one that your office requires? No, we okay. don't. We don't. Uh, we don't require that form. And I'm going to show you a sample of what it looks like in full uh, uh, okay. version of it. I've seen moment, it okay? from another, like an, uh, another agency that I've been, you know, like on another side of the deal when someone used it. What, what, what would you require to use that for? Well, that, that form, that form uh, if you, the form justifies is two things. Okay, let me let me do this. <clears throat> let me go to the zip forms real quick. Let me show you. AC form. All right, do you see the form? Yes, yes. Okay. So the confirmation of real estate agency relationship as required by civil code. Uh, uh, it says the following, this is an amendment to the, and supersedes the agency. The following agency relationship is or are hereby confirmed for this transaction. <clears throat> so it goes to the confirmation of the selling brokerage and who the brokerage is, Keller Williams, the corporate license of Keller Williams, and the broker, if any, is working with the seller, uh, both the buyer and the uh, seller as dual agent. Uh, seller agent and their uh, brokerage. And then who is the buyer working for? <clears throat> is the buyer also working with the seller uh, uh, or, or both the uh, buyer and the uh, seller as dual agent? Then the buyer's broker form, uh, form excuse me, buyer's uh, broker firm, and then acknowledgement and receipt of this copy, both the buyer and the seller sign, and then both the uh, acknowledgement of uh, if you're representing both uh, both buyer and the seller, you want to add this as reinforcement. If this is more geared to, in my opinion, uh, if you're a dual agent, <clears throat> you know, to protect the sake of the integrity of, um, you know, someone saying, well, you know, I was not provided with the right documentation or something comes back. You, you want to have this as a backup to the agency because the AD form already stipulates this and it's a, it's a one page as a real estate broker is qualified to advise on real estate if desired legal advice consultant and, and it's not really how can I put it uh, as detailed as the uh, as the AD form but let me let me go because you'd also because you'd also have it on the um, RPA if you were dual right you have Correct. it on so they're getting the three times R, RPA AD and now um, an AC Correct. Like I said, I've never initiated on any of my transactions, but I have had that sent to me on the other side. Absolutely. So here's the AD form, right? Which was uh, revised in 2021. It talks about the seller's agent and you know uh, what the responsibility of the agent and the three bullet points, diligent exercise of reasonable skills and care, a duty of honest and fair dealing in good faith, a duty of disclose of no material facts, and it goes with the same motion with the buyer's agent. It says the same thing. Now it also goes into and clarifies agent representing both the seller and the buyer. So this supersedes the confirmation, okay? And I encourage everyone to utilize this one because this one gives you more of the meat and potato than the confirmation of agency. And my personal opinion, I, I, they need to remove that one because this one goes into really the heart of everyone's responsibility, okay? And it talks about, you know, both buyer and the seller, seller and buyer's responsibility. And it has, a, you know, specific paragraphs regarding <clears throat> both. And then buyer and then seller sign, uh, landlords or tenants on this, broker's uh, information, and then the uh, agent's um, signature. Then it goes on page two, 
with all the uh, jargon of uh, Civil Code Section 2079.3, which clearly gives more information. Now, I can tell you from personal experience, no one reads this, but attorneys, buyers and sellers that are attorneys, they'll go through this and go bullet, uh, bullet point by bullet point, which 2379.13, A, B, C, D, and it goes on and on. It, it talks about all the aspects of, you know, what the uh, agreements are, what are the terms, you know, in uh, dollars amount, it goes on and on and on. It's been a while since I've read this, but then it breaks it down to, you know, 14, 15, 16, 17a. And, uh, you know, and then here's where that confirmation, the confirmation from the uh, AC form is right here in the back and confirmation of, and this one you don't fill in, but it's more of a backup to the agency disclosure. That's what it is, okay? Uh, then it goes into your fair housing and so on and so forth, but that's, that's what it is. Okay, any questions? All right, so let's continue. May reduce the uh, dual agency exposure to losses. Can you see my uh, PowerPoint presentation? Yeah, okay. Uh, by putting clients in, on notice regarding the nature of dual agency and what may be disclosed to the, uh, to the other party. Additional resources, you know, quick guide, dual agency disclosure. You can click on it and that'll take you to uh, the uh, presentation. <clears throat> Let me go back here real quick and see if I can show you this. And here it is. Oops, let's see if it comes up. Maybe not, but click. And here is the, uh, the form. So it goes through a lot of the same as the presentation. You know, who is a dual agent? What's the extent of a dual agency's responsibility? What form should I, a dual agent provide? Clarity in the nature of the agency, statutory duties. So again, you know, just to emphasize, always, always make sure that uh, <clears throat> you have the uh, proper documentation in place in order for you to protect yourself uh, from any potential liability, non-disclosure, material facts, but more so to protect your commission. All right, with that uh, being said, any questions? Cool, all right. Well, then that concludes uh, today's uh, training on dual agency fiduciary responsibilities and uh, agency disclosures. And again, if you have any additional questions, please send me an email, call me, text me, and I'll be more than happy to clarify that. So again, always excited to see so many awesome people on the, uh, on the call. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate you all. And uh, I'll see you on the next uh, contact wait, class. Wait, am I going to see you next week? At Mega? Yes. yes. We have to have lunch or dinner or drinks or yes. whatever. Something. Absolutely. Okay. All Absolutely. right. See you later. Thank you so okay. much. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.